Welcome, everyone. I'm really delighted uh, as uh, the Dean of the Friedman School of Nutrition Science and Policy at Tufts to uh, be hosting a food tank here. Uh, uh, as uh, Will mentioned, um, you know, we think this is one of the most appropriate venues um, uh, to host this kind of uh, multi-stakeholder discussion to bring people together. Uh, the school was founded about 40 years ago now, um, and it was founded by Jean Mayer and Stan Gershoff, the founding dean, um, based on the premise that nutrition uh, is, of course, about understanding biochemistry and human metabolism, but nutrition is also about understanding behavior and communication and economics and policy and food systems and agriculture uh, and how all of those things interact together uh, to, to create people's uh, decisions, industry's decisions, and, and what we eat today. That cell to society approach that we really take pride in is exemplified by our 60 primary faculty, our 100 affiliated and secondary faculty, and our 350 graduate students, and are now nearing 2,000 alumni. It's really how we bring together uh, nutrition. Many people hear a school of nutrition and think about clinical dietetics or nutritionists. We're uh, not training nutritionists. We're training people in the science of food systems, policy, uh, basic science uh, across, across the, the globe. Um, if you, you can think of our degrees as kind of an MBA for the food system, for people who uh, are already in the field or want to have a career switch and want to get that advanced knowledge to take their, their own efforts to the next level. And the reason I say that is that um, we are really proud uh, that uh, Danny Nirenberg, the founder of Food Tank, is an alum of our school. And she has said we were speaking yesterday, and she really made it quite clear that our school was uh, incredibly instrumental in, in creating her career uh, directions. I'm going to tell you a little bit about her. Of course, you'll be, you'll be hearing from her later today. Um, but she's, she really represents kind of a, a, a career path not unlike many of our alumni. She came from the Peace Corps uh, to the school, and she said that the school was so instrumental for someone coming from the ser service and overseas to give her a framework to, uh, of what she wanted to do, to give her a direction, and to give her a network. Um, and then she went into advocacy uh, and worked in nonprofits. And then about four years ago now, uh, she became a social entrepreneur with her own savings, started Food Tank. And I think you know, she really, like in many ways, um, is ahead of her time, even for the school. So two of the initiatives that we're uh, launching this year actually directly relate to the kinds of things that Danny uh, Nirenberg did. So we're launching a service scholarship program where we're going to match the, the scholarships from anybody applying and getting into the school from any of the service programs uh, in the country, Peace Corps, uh, Teach for America, City Year, Food Corps, the military. Uh, we want to match those scholarships into the top candidates, give them full rides. And then when they get here, we want them to actually get involved and have a system to create uh, a, a structure for all of our students to understand service and what it means um, and to link with the Tisch College uh, on the Medford campus, which is also very uh, uh, devoted to these issues. And then the second thing we're launching this year, again, very um, apropos to, to Danny and her work, is we're launching a program in nutrition entrepreneurship. Many of our alums are already becoming social and business entrepreneurs, maybe up to a quarter of our students now say that uh, uh, entrepreneurship will be a major part of their career. And so we're launching a formal program including coursework, didactic experiences, internships, uh, culminating uh, with a competition and a prize to think about social and business entrepreneurship. So again, we're really excited to have Food Tank here. It, it fits with our CELTA Society approach, the breadth of our school, um, the, the level of engagement of our school, and kind of our entrepreneurial spirit. So why is food important? Why are we all here? Well, I really believe that this is nutrition's time. Um, for health, it's clear that poor nutrition is the number one cause of poor health in this country and globally in almost every country in the world. And we've shown that and others have shown that quantitatively. And so just let that sink in for a minute that the number one cause of poor health in this country and in almost every country in the world is almost ignored by the healthcare system. 
right? And then people wonder why we have an expensive, inefficient healthcare system. But it's not just about health, although of course health is the most obvious um, uh, uh, manifestation of our, of our nutrition system. Um, our food system is also creating profound disparities. Um, the disparities contribute to poor, uh, inadequate uh, intake, and then lead to a vicious cycle of illness, disease, um, food insecurity, that uh, actually further worsens those profound disparities. This is also a huge economic issue. So almost one in five dollars in the US economy, one in five dollars in our entire economy is spent on health care. And the fundamental driver of those costs is chronic disease, and the fundamental driver of chronic disease is lifestyle, in particular poor diet. So this is the leading economic issue facing our country by far. There's no other single aspect of our country that has such a major economic impact. And if you look at small businesses, large businesses, self-insured companies, uh, you know, they realize that their health care costs are devastating their competitiveness. Um, and so whether it's for business or the economy, this is also, I think, a leading, if not the leading issue of our time. This is also, I think, for the current uh, administration in DC should realize that this is a major national security issue. Um, uh, mission readiness, which is about 700 retired generals and admirals, has, has made very clear that they think poor nutrition is the single uh, uh, national security threat of our time because one third of recruits can't uh, uh, be enrolled into the military because of overweight or obesity. Two thirds of active duty forces are overweight or obese. And if you count diabetes and all the other chronic diseases, this is a national security urgency. Many of our national food policies were developed because of national security issues. So the, the school lunch program was launched in 1945 because during the draft, the number one reason that people couldn't get recruited was they had nutrition deficiencies. So the school lunch program was launched as a national security issue. The RDAs, the, 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 the recommended daily allowances, which lead to all of our um, you know, fundamental kind of foundation for all of our food policy, was launched in 1941 uh, by presidential order. Uh, FDR ordered the National Nutrition Conference on Defense, knowing that we were going into war and he wanted a population fit for war. That led to the RDA. So we've always had food policy around national security. And now, rather than facing uh, hunger and, and food insecurity, which we still have, we also have this rampant um, problem of chronic disease. So I think this is really a, a nonpartisan, bipartisan issue that we can really address in this country. Um, the public gets this now. The public understands that we have a nutrition crisis. And of course we have healthy food. Uh, and of course there are many, many innovations and exciting things going on. It's not uh, all uh, uh, dreary, and we're going to talk a lot about that at this conference. But we still fundamentally have a broken food system that we can fix within a decade, and we have to fix within a decade. And all of those arguments and all of these conversations about health care, repeal and replace, Obamacare, how is nutrition, how is our food system not the fundamental plank of, of that discussion? If we could fix the food system modestly, modestly, we could, we could eliminate all of these arguments about health care costs and who's going to pay for what uh, because of the enormous savings for that. So, so I think that I'm really excited uh, that, again, we're hosting this. I think that um, Danny and Food Tank have done a remarkable job of, of convening and bringing people together. Uh, and uh, I'm, I'm really happy to see an incredibly diverse uh, uh, audience. And I know we have thousands of people online. Uh, and I'm just uh, uh, really looking forward to the day's event. So thank you very much for coming.